Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is about fetal genitalia ultrasound. This is the first video in this video series with title of Fetal Sex Determination Part 1. The outline of this presentation include introduction, the significance of fetal sex determination, embryology of external genitalia, including in different stage, external genitalia in male and also in female, sonographic fetal sex determination during the late first and early second trimester, the important signs for determination are sagittal sign, dumb sign, triple lines, the angle of genital tubicle, anal genital distance, yolk sac fetal pole distance, and the use of artificial intelligence in fetal sex determination and final teaching points. At first introduction, about 75% of pregnant women want to know the fetal sex. Psychologically, it may be better for some parents who are disappointed in the sex of their baby to work through their disappointment before the baby is born. Early gender identification during the first trimester can be achieved with sonography and genetic testing. With the development of advanced ultrasound machines, fetal sex ascertainment has become possible at early as 11 weeks of gestation. Definitive results can be achieved with the latter by sampling the chorionic villus under ultrasonographic guidance. However, it's an invasive procedure with an associated one and a half relative risk of pregnancy loss before 28 weeks. Alternatively, analysis of cell-free DNA is non-invasive but rather expensive and limited in availability. In contrast, ultrasonography can be used non-invasively to determine fetal gender with great accuracy in the second and third trimester by visual identification of the penis or labia majora and minora. Ultrasonography can also be used to determine gender by measuring the genital tubical angle with 100% sensitivity at 13 weeks but lower sensitivity between 11 and 12 weeks. The significance of fetal sex determination. Indication for prenatal sex determination can be medical or non-medical. The medical indication include in families at risk of X-linked disorders, testicular feminization syndrome, pseudohermaphroditism, genital anomalies, ambiguous genitalia, and determination of zygosity in multiple pregnancy. In families predisposed to X-linked disorders, it leads to reduction in invasive procedures as sonographic prenatal determined females would not require further invasive genetic screening. The non-medical reasons given by women for sonographic sex determination include periparturition shopping, curiosity, husband relative request, and confirmed suspicion. Embryology of external genitalia include in different stage, external genitalia in male and in the female. Getting to know how external genitalia develops helps a lot to better understand the ultrasound images to determine fetal sex and also to better understand the congenital genital anomalies. At first, in different stage. This is a diagram of an embryo at the end of the third weeks of development. We can see here a three laminar embryo famous as primitive streak, which has developed with ectoderm facing the amnion, endoderm facing the yolk sac, and mesoderm in the middle. On both ends, the mesoderm is deficient and the endoderm and ectoderm are in direct contact. 
creating the oropharyngeal membrane on the cranial end and the cluical membrane on the caudal end. In the third weeks of development, mesenchymal cells originating in the region of the primitive streak migrate around the cluical membrane to form a pair of a slightly elevated cluical folds. Cranial to the cluical membrane, the folds unit to form the genital tubicle. Caudally, the folds are subdivided into urethral folds anteriorly and anal folds posteriorly. In the meantime, another pair of elevation, famous as genital swellings, become visible on each side of the urethral folds. These swellings later form the scrotal swellings in the male and labia majora in the female. At the end of the six weeks, however, it's impossible to distinguish between the two sexes. This scanning electron micrograph of external genitalia of a human embryo at the seven weeks of gestation shows here anal fold and anal opening, genital swellings, urethral folds, and genital tubercle. External genitalia in the male. Development of the external genitalia in the male is under the influence of androgen secreted by the fetal testis and is characterized by rapid elongation of the genital tubicle, which is now called the phallus. During this elongation, the phallus pulls the urethral folds forward so that they form the lateral walls of the urethral groove. This groove extends along the caudal aspect of the phallus but does not reach the most distal part or the glands. The epithelial lining of the groove, which originates in the endoderm, forms the urethral palate. At the end of the third month, the two urethral folds close over the urethral palate, forming the penine urethra. This canal does not extend to the tip of the phallus. This most distal portion of the urethra is formed during the fourth months, when ectodermal cells from the tip of the glands penetrate inward and form a short epithelial cord. This cord later obtains a lumen, thus forming the external urethra meters. The genital swellings, known in the male as scrotal swellings, arise in the inguinal region. With further development, they move caudally, and each swelling then makes up half of the scrotum, which two hemiscrotum are separated by the scrotal septum. External genitalia in the female. Estrogens stimulate development of the external genitalia of the female. The genital tubicle elongates only slightly and forms the clitoris. Urethral folds do not fuse as in the male but develop into labia minora. Genital swellings enlarge and form the labia majora. The urogenital groove is open and forms the vestibule. Although the genital tubercle does not elongate extensively in the female, it's larger than in the male during the early stages of development. So, in fact, using the tubercle length as a criterion, as mentioned by ultrasound, has resulted in mistakes in identification of the sexes during the third and fourth months of gestation. Now, Sonographic fetal sex determination during the late first and early second trimester. We must know sex determination by imaging the external genitalia is not possible prior to 11 to 12 completed weeks of gestation. The first sign for sex determination is sagittal sign. The sagittal sign is the most common sonographic sign for fetal sex determination in early pregnancy. The fetus is scanned in the midline sagittal plane as the contour of the rump is followed around in this plane from dorsal to ventral. A focal bulge reflecting the penis or clitoris is encountered ventrally. 
uh, caudal notch indicates female genitalia, whereas a cranial notch indicates male genitalia. Accuracy based on the sagittal sign improves with fetal growth, and it reads 100% accuracy about 14 weeks of gestation. The accuracy of sex determination by sagittal sign increases with using transvaginal sonography and also the experience of the radiologist. Dom sign. The dom sign is the uniform non-septative dom-shaped structure at the base of the fetal penis representing the fetal scrotum, famous as the dom sign. Triple lines. Female genitalia can be distinguished based on visualization of two to four parallel lines representing the labia majora and minora, the angle of the genital tubicle. According to some studies, fetal sex can be determined by measuring the angle of the genital tubicle to the horizontal line through the lumbosacral skin surface. Male gender is assigned when this angle is greater than 30 degrees, female when this angle is less than 10 degrees, and undetermined sex because of fetal position or angle between 10 and 30 degrees. The accuracy for male gender by using this angle is about 99 to 100% at all gestational ages. In females, the detection rate was less accurate and more dependent on gestational age, which it reads about 100% after 13 weeks of gestation. Anu genital distance. Anu genital distance is a recently introduced sonographic marker of fetal gender. It's based on measuring the distance between the anus and the base of the genital tubicle in the pineal region. According to recent studies, anal genital distance is sexually dimorphic since its length is dependent on hormonal levels. Hence, anal genital distance in male fetuses can be longer than that in female fetuses. Anal genital distance increased gradually with gestational age. It appears that this distance varies among races and some study reported the normative centile reference ranges for this distance. But contrary to the existing literature, the magnitude of the differences was not substantial enough to yield high predictive accuracy. So, further longitudinal research is warranted to investigate the usefulness of the anogenital distance as an imaging biomarker for congenital genital anomalies and fetal androgen levels. Yoksak fetal pole distance. New researchers is being done to determine the fetal sex in the early weeks such as this article which was published at 2020. The researchers in this study tried to determine fetal sex by a transvaginal ultrasound at 6 to 9 weeks of gestation according to Yoksak fetal pole distance. In the first trimester of ultrasound examination, the gestational sac, the yolk sac fetal pole distance and the yolk sac size were measured but some situations must be considered. Retrochronic hemorrhage must not be present. Of course, the fetus must be alive, and we must not see any gynecologic pathology like uterian fibroma. They found that the yolk sac size did not show any difference between the genders, whereas the yolk sac fetal pole distance was found to be higher in female fetuses compared to male fetuses and also they found a cutoff value for it about 1.8 mm for female gender. This value showed about 67% specificity and 70% sensitivity, and also about 70% accuracy. So, they conclude that the yolk sac fetal pole distance is an important element in detecting the female gender in the first trimester. 
but more studies with larger numbers of patients are necessary to clarify the effectiveness of this method in predicting gender in the first trimester. Now, the use of artificial intelligence in fetal sex determination. In recent years, a lot of efforts has been made to use artificial intelligence to determine the fetal sex by sonography, and special algorithms are used for this purpose. But the use of this method is still in the preliminary stages and the medical engineers associated with it believe that this model proved to have a high rate of fetal sex determination that could be of significant use only in areas where ultrasound expertise is not readily available. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. Sex determination by imaging the external genitalia is not possible prior to 11 to 12 completed weeks of gestation. Accuracy for male gender according to the angle of the genital tubicle is about 99 to 100% at all gestational ages, but in females the detection rate is less accurate and more dependent on gestational age. Sex determination according to anal genital distance and yolk sac fetal pole distance are in the research stage. The use of artificial intelligence for fetal sex determination could be of significant use only in areas where ultrasound expertise is not readily available. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.